Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of gamefully unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Oh. We did do it. We did do it. We did do it. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone's. My name is David Bell. My name is Tom Ryman. And we just watched Thick as Thieves. Yes. Not spelled with like two C's. Not like thick. No. Like thick, not thick. Thick. Mm hmm. In the dog eat dog business of organized crime, yeah. Kendall Mackin is the world's greatest thief. Bottom line is there's money up there, and I'm gonna go and get me some. Pointy Williams is a gangster with a practical side. What kind of black man drives a Volvo? A black man that appreciates safety? Shoot, this bad boy got side airbags, kid. But when there's two people at the top, you uh, owe me some money. When he got you covered. Open the door slowly. Keep your hands up. Someone has to take a fall. It's Thursday? Yeah. It is. Uh, which means this is a Patreon uh, requested episode of We Just Watched. This comes to you from Joshua Graves, who uh, gave us a, uh, a list to choose from. And we chose the 1998, I think, Alec Baldwin, Michael J. White film was actually released in 99 okay but yeah. uh that did you were you able to see, find this anywhere other than youtube no um it's a you can get it on dvd on amazon this movie okay. is extremely out of print yes it is <laughs> it is available in like full screen on youtube uh that's that's where i watched it mm-hmm. it's a movie i didn't know existed nope not at all. Yeah. Uh it's it's a movie? What did you think what did you think of this? I actually liked it. Okay. I'm glad. Uh I didn't hate it, but I I don't know if I liked it. Uh I I, en- I enjoyed it overall. There's some there's a there's a couple of, of, of minor issues, I think. Well, there's one major issue and a few minor <laughs> issues. Okay. My my main issue with this movie, I watched it about twenty four hours ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I am, boy, Tom, I'm struggling to remember it. <laughs> okay. I have notes and stuff. Like, I'm not drawing a complete blank. Is My point is that it left very, like, it was, it, it felt very boring. And that's it. That's, <laughs> that's where I was going with it. Um, and it, and then it kind of ends. Mm-hmm. And like, I was, I was sort of like, oh, okay. All right. Like, it, again, I have nothing against it. It was just like it's surprising to watch like a crime movie where like not much happens, you know? Um, I guess. I mean, there's a fair bit of stuff that happens. Uh, it's only about eighty eight minutes long. Yeah. So that that doesn't hurt. Well, it, I guess it's more that. Um, I guess we should go through the plot. Like, uh, start, starting with like, and again, I didn't hate this movie. There was just a lot of stuff where I'm like, I I, w- I wasn't sure why I s- they they included it. The movie opens. Okay, well, here's here's a question before we start going through that. Okay. Did you think it was funny? No. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a big problem then. Okay. Um, yeah. I think that's probably why it felt boring to you because this movie is mostly a comedy. Right. But the comedy is very uh, dry? I mean, in in some scenes it's dry. Um it's 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 written and directed by the guy who wrote and directed black dynamite right um i i i thought it was genuinely funny i Um, it got a lot of like that's why i wasn't bored right uh, when there's not crimes happening it it, i mean it got a lot of like hmm from me like not laughter but like amusement Mm -hmm. uh but like i can't really remember any like jokes I can remember moments where I was like, oh, this should be the movie. Like, I would watch 90 minutes of Alec Baldwin uh, shopping for dog graves. Yeah, uh, sure. Because why not? Or, like, brushing his dog's teeth. Mm -hmm. All the dog stuff. This is kind of the original John Wick. There's a couple of things in here, yeah. There's there's a lot of John Wick. There's um, 
Rebecca De Mornay's character makes the hot fuzz joke about uh, a simple shootout requiring a mountain of paperwork. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> Um, every I think every scene with Michael J. White is really funny. Like I really enjoyed his character. He's, I really liked Andre Brower's character. Andre Brower Brower is killing it. They're all Michael J. White is killing it. They're all yeah. They're all great. Um, it's charis. It's it has charisma. I guess the movie. Uh, yeah. Well, my I, I'll 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 add like a like a like a like a footnote, like an asterisk to that declaration that they're all great. And this is, I said at the beginning, I had one major problem with this movie. I think Alec Baldwin is out of place. Well, he... I don't think, I don't think he's the right char- uh, actor for this character. The character is, he's a thief uh, mm-hmm. who's, I guess, tied to the mob. I was having trouble... Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's a part of it's Alec Baldwin. Because if he was like... Um, Jason Statham, who obviously wouldn't be doing this movie at this time, mm-hmm. uh, I could really, I could really see this work because Alec right, Baldwin you- is kind of playing it, just kind of overall light, and I don't get the impression that he's like a criminal. Well, he's playing it like Alec Baldwin, which is to say, it's like he's very brooding and like he's like mean, like it's like he's he's he has the wrong charisma for this part i think because like they give his character interesting tidbits like you know he cared like the stuff with the dog he's really into collecting vinyl he has a funny bit with janine garofalo in the beginning but his energy's all wrong so he just comes off like an asshole like if it was somebody like a statham or uh, i don't know um I don't, I don't know, but like, I think he's just like the wrong dude that's for a, that character. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Is one, I think he should have been a little younger. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. Also, like for example, the jazz thing. So this movie is about a professional thief who's into jazz, and that's he's into to, jazz and dogs. Yeah, and those, it, those are his interests, and that has to be part of the synopsis because there are scenes just devoted to him loving jazz uh like where he goes to a record store and he inspects mm-hmm. it and i get what the joke is is that he's being very very like uh he's being very particular particular about yeah his record. He, he has a light a pen light and he's checking the record and he's mm-hmm. finding little scratches but since it's alec baldwin and he's not playing it like Again, like imagine Jason Statham doing that. It would be funny right. just because it's him. A lot of these yeah. jokes have to do with the fact that look at this person doing this thing. Yeah, look at how ordinary this guy's right in- interests are. The problem is that Alec Baldwin isn't. He's not Schwarzenegger. He's not a tough guy. So it just feels like you're watching a guy complain about records. <laughs> And yeah, it just no feels joke. like you're watching Alec Baldwin bitch about having to put his phone away on an airplane. Like it's like right, and that's not. He just comes off like an asshole, and these are all scenes that are supposed to endear him to us. Right, he needs to be. I think this script was written with it, like the the imagined main character being like like casting really matters for this. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. yeah, because they need to be someone who feels dangerous. Uh, and Alec Baldwin never feels like a killer, like it, uh, in general, um, mm-hmm. at least the kind that's in this or like, it, so like having Alec Baldwin do that, it's just very mundane and mm-hmm. and it's a whole scene. And then the scenes ends. And I remember being like, I don't know why I watched that, but the, like you pointing out that he's the wrong casting makes it make way more sense. Well, those scenes with him would have landed. Mm-hmm. Instead, like I think of him as a comedic actor um because he does a lot of comedy right and he's good at it but he it has to be like he's not playing that in this he's playing this like it's a serious crime drama yeah and i I think there's a certain kind of comedy he's good at where it he has to be he has to be like a jack donahue yeah um he's got to be that kind of character yeah he's like he's like he's he's being an overt asshole and doesn't realize it yeah Uh, it's and the, and the joke is is that he's a buffoonish asshole, mm-hmm. and that's not what this character is at all. No, not at all. The opening is very weird. Um, I really liked that scene, but it, like, yeah, you're right. It's it's extremely weird. It's unnecessary. Um, Even if it was recast as someone else, the opening is Alec Baldwin with a hilarious haircut. 
Right, because he's supposed to be considerably younger yes. in that scene. <laughs> yes, and I didn't understand that at first, so I was just like, what's wrong with him? Like, why right. is his hair <laughs> right, look like right. that? Or like, I thought the movie was much older. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, this is 1990. Like, yeah, I but thought the he, movie was much older, and then he gets out of the bus, and it's fucking Janine Garofalo. I was like, I don't know when the, what yeah. year this is. <laughs> and he doesn't look that much younger, so it was like, it's Alec Baldwin with a dumb and dumber haircut. Right. He's got the Lloyd Christmas, and he's wearing like a weirdly pressed plaid shirt. Yeah. He looks like, like he's, dre- he's dressed like a little boy. Yes. He looks like an old man disguised as a young man. That's the yeah, only way yeah. to describe it. Yeah. He looks like Jack Donahue, like, put on, like, a, like, uh, a put, tr- like, was trying to blend in with young people as a bit in yeah. 30 Rock. Yeah. Uh, and so the, f- <sighs> that, yeah, that threw me way off. And the, the point of that scene is just he has a dog now, right? Like, yeah, is he, anything like, else in that he scene contribute over to the rest of the film? girlfriend and takes a bunch of money and leaves. And it's, I mean, it's funny. Um, like, it's just him getting the dog from his girlfriend yeah, who's and, cheating and, on him. Yeah, and money. Like, it, it lets us know that he's a thief. I don't know. It's It doesn't inform his character in any meaningful way. It, inf- it informs his character in a different way, in a way that's not paid off by Alec Baldwin, I think. Like, if that had been... Like if that had again, if that had been Statham coming in, I'm like, yeah, the money's hidden in an oil barrel, and like she goes outside and he's collecting all of his money and he takes his records and he's like, all right, I'll pick up the dog too, and then you know, like it's that would have made more sense, and it, it sets it very, it sets an almost wacky tone for the movie that's not immediately felt because Alec Baldwin plays the next twenty minutes so serious, right? And I guess that's what it me what I mean is it doesn't inform anything about his character. Right. That gets paid off later. Just that he likes records and dogs because right. it cuts. It cuts to his apartment, however many years later, and we see that he we see that he has a huge vinyl collection and still has the same dog, and it's old as fucking Christ. Right, and like <laughs> they could have set that up by just showing him in his apartment with that huge record collection and the old dog. Like we just yeah. need to know he loves it. Like that opening scene is so weird because I kept expecting like. Is Janine Garofalo going to come back? Is Are they going to pay it off in some way? Because it's such an elaborate setup uh, just to tell us, well, this is our character. Like, I don't know why it took place so long ago. I think it's just to establish that the dog's old, but they say the dog's old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a, I mean, they say show, don't tell. I mean, I don't know. It, but it, they it, show it, and you- tell. <laughs> They do both. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you could have easily trimmed this beginning. Yeah. But it does, I don't know. Maybe they added it in a reshoot because of Alec Baldwin's performance in the first 20 minutes does not prepare you for the fact that the rest of the movie is more of a comedy. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Cause they, they, they definitely, when that opening happened, because I thought this was a thriller. I thought this was like a 90s <laughs> yeah, thriller. Every, everything about it suggests that it is. Like the cover mm-hmm. and like the cover is, guys, look up the cover to this movie. It is very funny. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you've seen the movie. Cause it's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. I ultimately, <laughs> I some I feel like something happened when making this movie that resulted in them not sure how to advertise it. Uh, because the cover is like, it's a thriller. Uh, and then the like you they start with him on the bus and mm-hmm. it's like a comedy tone and you're like wait a fucking second what is this and i think maybe it was trying to be dark comedy uh and then since alec baldwin it, I mean, plays it, is, it yeah but since he plays it so straight like i feel like they weren't someone was like we should make this out to be more like a thriller mm-hmm. uh well i mean and also i think this is some something that can't i mean like because if you look at the cover of the movie it's alec baldwin and rebecca de mornay who is barely in the movie Mm -hmm. um an extremely secondary character featured very heavily and andre brower like holding a gun and looking menacing like in the lower right hand corner i think it's because half of the principal characters characters in this movie are black oh yeah the yeah marketing is they don't like michael j white's not on the cover of this movie and that's crazy yeah. because he's like the second main character right him and brower um yeah him like, and brower yeah yeah huh. like the three the three main characters are alec baldwin michael j white and andre brower like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so i think it's just that that shitty 
marketing where it's like, well, we gotta have we gotta have the white stars up front. I don't know. There's a and whole show thing. like a ro- like they imply it's like in some imply, imply a ro- romance, apply a romance, and like this more uh, recognizable thing. Like it's or or what they quote unquote think is more marketable. It's it's very stupid. It's 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 it's. Yeah. I, I think. I think entrenched racism had something to do with this Probably. marketing. There was a romance. It was between me and Michael J. White's uh, cocaine wife. <laughs> <laughs> she I fucking love that scene. I love her. I want to marry her. Uh, <laughs> she was great. She was great. It's and just I, them like, on she, a country she club doing and doing while cocaine. <laughs> And she does it while he's saying the the blessing, and he flips. Out. Yeah, he starts saying a blessing, and she does a bump of coke. It's so that's yeah, that was fantastic. Oh man, um, yeah, I thought this movie was fucking funny. That like get- when he has that when that conversation with his chef. Uh, about like, hey, I had this like, I had these sweetbreads in in, in Miami. She oh, really yeah. had sweetbreads, and like his chef gets more and more bummed. He's like, no, no, you're 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 my guy, you're my boy. Like you and I are great, man. If you ever left me for, if you ever got another restaurant ever opened up and they lured you out, I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably kill you. I got so jealous. Yeah. And then his chef is just standing there, like really bummed out, and he's like, "Oh no, man. You know I'm just kidding. You know I'm kidding. Come on." And he like you know gives him daps and like hugs him and everything. And then like he whole afterwards he like keeps a hand on his shoulder and just looks at him and says, "Don't leave though." Yeah. Like I fucking laughed like shit at that scene. I mean, that's very funny, but I'd say Michael J. White, who's who's killing it. And again, yeah. I think Alec Baldwin's doing a good job. He's miscast. But He's miscast. Michael J. White, a lot of the comedy for him comes from him being menacing and angry. Right, him. It's it's the it's the Statham thing. It's the yeah. same vibe you would have got from Statham. It's he's this menacing guy doing funny things. I mean, here's my or saying or saying funny things. Here's my pitch: reverse the mm. roles. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's it. Like yeah. Alec Baldwin, because I think his character, Michael J. White's character, uh, and, and maybe this is part of my problem with it. He was more, I guess, charismatic like, in an he's, aggressive he's more... way. And in a way that like when spoilers, he dies, mm-hmm. it didn't feel like a bad guy was dying. It felt like right. the only character <laughs> that I found interesting died. And I was like, oh, and it like kind of well, sad. That, that, that... Yeah, not the only character. The, the the characters I was worried about in this film were him and Brower. I was yes. like, I hope they don't die. And Brower doesn't, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Like he's he's more likable than our hero character yeah. is. We should <laughs> so, be, be I I'm assuming people haven't watched this movie, so we might no want to There's no fucking way people have watched this movie. We should yeah, probably so. explain what it's about. Mm-hmm. Uh this is about a thief na- uh, uh, named Alec Baldwin. Who's, sure. who's thick uh mm-hmm. and uh he has an old dog and he goes to do one one job for through the italian mob right they like set it up right he's he kind of gets subcontracted by the italian mob in chicago and they're sending him to detroit where they also have a presence uh because they want him to steal a bunch of food stamps from a factory because it's going to be a holiday weekend there won't be anybody there for three days and the stamps are in the factory and he does the job and he's driving back to the airport Mm -hmm. Um, they have him pay they have him pay their middleman or rather they they have him uh, give the stamps to their middleman who is pointy who is michael j white and michael j white is the guy that pays him money and gives him the car to take to the airport but michael j white tips him off to some crooked cops who were supposed to kill him and take the money that's correct and alec baldwin ends up killing the cops instead he does uh, which, uh, see, this is, again, casting Alec Baldwin. They did this thing where he's in the car with the two cops in the front seat, mm-hmm. and he says something like, you're going to kill me, aren't you? So when are you going to kill, you me? Gonna kill me? When are you going to kill me? And then it, like, cuts to outside. He picks the handcuff, and it cuts to outside, and, like, guns go off, and the both of the cops are uh, die, are killed, and Alec Baldwin stumbles out of the car. And my first thought was, he couldn't have done that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I did not Baldwin. believe that for a second. Yeah, and so like, again, if that had been Statham or Michael J. White, exactly. I would have been like, yeah, that happened. That totally happened. Right, and like, there needs to be like that kind of presence, like a kind of almost like wiry tough guy presence uh, mm-hmm. that like they feel very dangerous, like a Vinnie Jones type. 
Or like, you know, well, not, I wouldn't call Vinnie Jones wiry, but <laughs> not wiry, but, but you know what I mean? Like, well, he's like short fuse. Um, yeah. Wiry I, means something different. Yeah. I would, I would not, I would not <clears throat> say like Schwarzenegger would be a good pick because he's too friendly, you know, mm-hmm. like they have to be like someone who gets set off really easily as well. Like that's why Statham comes to mind. Mm. Uh, and and so like the moment that happened, it was like I fucked if I believe that. So then yeah. Baldwin gets out of there and he he wants his money, right? He he basically is like I'm gonna get vengeance. Yeah, on he these wants guys. his money, and also he's he's personally offended because uh, Pointy tried to kill him. Right. So he um he gets a couple guys together, brings his old dog, and goes back and robs his club, Pointy's mm-hmm. club. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he what did he blows up his factory of cars, his warehouse. Uh, yeah, of cars. He, he burns down the warehouse where he keeps like a big part of Pointy's bu- Pointy's business is stealing and and stripping and re you know reselling uh, cars. Right. So he has this huge warehouse full of cars that Alec Baldwin burns down, but like it, it's also like affecting the mob's business because they both work for the mob. Right. <laughs> so it's like, and um, um yeah. They, and then, and so, like, Alec Baldwin considers, considers it settled, but Pointy tries to attack him at his hotel room. He's not there, but his dog is, and his old dog, who he's going to put to sleep anyway, gets shot. And so, yeah. uh, this means war. Alec Baldwin tries to confront him at a restaurant. Um, at his restaurant. It's at Pointy's at restaurant. At Pointy's restaurant, and all hell breaks loose, and he just gets the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was pretty good. I like that you idea. Know, that, that sh- the shootout was very funny. Like yeah. the shootout was really hot fuzz. Like yes, it's not it's not badass at all. It's just a huge clusterfuck. Alec Baldwin literally says "fuck this" and leaves. Yeah. Like the cop shoots her. Like Rebecca De Mornay shoots her gun once and misses wildly, and then has to like right fill out a shitload of paperwork. Uh, um, it's a fun scene. It is a fun scene. Although I I do want to get to that because. Part of this, I think, has to do with tone. Is that, I, I, I maybe it's Alec Baldwin's performance. Like, I think seems he's like the per- that. I think he's the element that ma- that causes the biggest tonal problem. Yeah, because scenes like that, I was like, wait, are you doing comedy right now? Uh, mm-hmm. Because again, I I thought this was going to be like at least a little bit of a thriller with the comedy, but it's kind of just like everything that happens is kind of anticlimactic. Yep. Uh, and and that's a it's a good idea, but because I think Alec Baldwin is playing it so like dry, yeah, it doesn't seem to land, or it didn't with me. Yeah, um, he's pl- yeah, that's a hundred percent. He's he's playing it like he's in a crime thriller. Yeah, and and that is wrong. <laughs> that's not that's not what we're going for here, yes. Alec Baldwin. <laughs> um. And so then they they set up a meeting like with the Italian mob and they're just like we're going to have a sit the down. Mo- uh, yeah, the mob does. They're like, "Okay, this we got to squash this cuz now our our names are getting back in the paper and that's no good." So yep. they 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 force a parlay between Pointy and Alec. And they essentially do the sit down. Alec's there, Pointy walks in, sits down. They're like, "What it'll take for you to settle this?" And before Pointy can actually give them an answer, uh, they just shoot him. Yeah, they kill him. And uh, then they're like, "All right, well, we solved it." And then that's and then that's kind of it. Yeah, uh, like Andre Brower is there, um, and he's like, and he and he's like, so when they're like, "Well, no, so nothing. It, it's 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 settled." And he's like, "All right, well, I'm out of here." <laughs> um, and then he looks like he looks at Alec Baldwin. He says, "Look, they they say it's done. So they, they say it's settled. So I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's settled." And then he goes back, and now he's running the business in in Chicago. And I think that there point was, he was running. Yeah, I think there was a very direct message about which one of the two gets shot, because the Italian mob uh, basically considers Alec Baldwin, the other white guy, as being like savable and pointy, who is black. Like it felt like. Because they're both, like you said, they both kind of work for them. Uh, yeah. There's no like, 
there's no reason to choose one between the other because they both well no there is oh pointy started it i guess pointy started it yeah. by essentially trying to rip them off that's true that's true so that's i mean i will say and, and i mean obviously it comes from the writer director being a, a black man um that the movie is uh refreshingly racially aware yeah for especially for a movie made in like 1999 um which i really i liked I yeah. thought that I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Yeah, um, it's good. I thought. I mean, yeah, yeah. We 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 already know that I enjoyed the movie, and well, that you're not. I'm not saying that it's a bad movie. I'm just saying that I sure. didn't enjoy it that much. Uh, that's fair. Yeah, and I think you nailed it, which is that the comedy didn't land, and I think you also did a very good job because I came into this not quite sure of what I felt about this movie or why I felt what I felt, and I think you've done a really good job which is identifying alec baldwin it makes me want to watch this movie again actually uh kind of knowing what the the problem is Mm -hmm. uh because it just didn't it's so it's so hard to describe uh it just didn't land yeah i it that clicked with me early on Mm -hmm. and i think it's because i had the benefit of marina watched it with me okay and she's completely uh like I think I've mentioned on podcasts or on something before, like she has a similar response to uh, Kevin Costner, where she just can't understand why Alec Baldwin was ever uh, considered a handsome leading man. No, really, with the the blue eyes, right? But there's the way he. It's especially noticeable in this movie. The way he uses them is very uh, villainous. I don't know. It's off putting in a, in a way. Like he definitely has charisma, but it's like a scary charisma. <laughs> I don't think Alec Baldwin, I, it's weird, is that I think he passed like 35 and became mm-hmm. villainous permanently. Yeah. In, in right, both right, as an like, actor and I guess in real life a little bit. He's like a human being. Yeah. But like you're right, Beetlejuice, you're, you're, he, it was like, oh, he's great. And then once he got to a certain like, age. Yeah. Yeah. He's real like, oh, shucks, Jimmy Stewart kind of vibe in Beetlejuice. Right. Um, and then he's just f- a fucking brooding asshole, <laughs> like seven years later. So anyway, like I had the benefit of Marina being like, "Ooh, oh, I don't understand why." Like they're trying to make us like Alec Baldwin, but he's just not likable. So like I-, I identified early on that it was like, "Oh, well, I'm just gonna like deal with him as Alec Baldwin and just enjoy all the supporting characters." And the rest of the character, the rest of the cast is fucking great. Right? They have the <laughs> the I don't know the guy's name. He played the. Um like the henchman in the naked gun and this he's dressed as gallagher uh <laughs> he's like works for michael j white yeah uh he's he's kind of entertaining there's the guy yeah, he's, he's he's one of the valets in ferris bueller oh yeah you're right oh maybe he's mm-hmm. not the henchman in naked gun actually um the, he might be the guy that he that tries to kill frank in the shower that might be him well it, it's uh jane he tries to kill jane in the shower jane in the shower that's uh, right and then he, Frank puts a hose in him till he explodes. Yep. Yeah, it might. That might be him. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, shit. What was I gonna say? Um, oh yeah, his friends. Uh, Alec Baldwin's friends. Is that? Was that? Um, what's his fuck? That's Bruce Greenwood. Bruce Greenwood. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sure was fucking was. weird to see like a youngish Bruce Greenwood. Youngish Bruce Greenwood. Yeah. Yeah, that's as young as he gets for me. Right, R- Bruce Greenwood is his just—he's never been younger than forty. Yeah, I don't think it was kind of neat. It was like, oh shit. Yeah. Okay, I can see it. I can see it. Maybe he's in other things before this. Like, I mm-hmm. can see him being a real, a real like he's a handsome guy now. But like, I can see him being like a real, a real fuckable, real fuckable yeah. actor. Yeah, just back a real in the fuck day. train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I uh, the the third guy uh, I I didn't recognize the actor but he was good like the third one mm-hmm. of uh, Alec Baldwin's friends who shoots a guy in the back with rock salt. Oh yeah. Um, um d- again don't know the actor's name but the guy who played Sugar Bear I really enjoyed that character. Wait, which one's Sugar Bear? Sugar Bear was the kind of crazy one that like he a- like he he asks if the first time we see him he asks if Michael J White's going to finish his hash browns. Oh yeah, he was great. He was pretty great. <laughs> the guy they lock in the closet. Um, I like that whole thing where he was just like, yeah, I don't whole... know, we should give him crackers or something. Yeah, so, so we need to kill him or give him some crackers or something because yeah. he's been in there for days. <laughs> yeah, and I like um, the resolution where they gave him a job. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that last bit where he's like, I don't know, are there any benefits in entrepreneurs? Like, yeah, you get to live. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Brower is killing it in this movie. I think what, yeah, he he's great. It was hard, though, to see him in this movie because every time, time they cut to him, I was like, oh, no, it's a cop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I kept forgetting that he's playing a criminal because, and mm. I, I, he plays a fine criminal. It's not his performance, it's just my association. Right, of him no, now he's, he's, is I see him so much with like a police authority. Yeah, as the captain of yeah. the Brooklyn Nine Nine. But that, no, he's 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 always been like a really good actor. So oh, yeah. pretty much anything he's in, he's gonna be killing it. Yeah. Um <clears throat> it, you know what this is? This is like supposed to be a Guy Ritchie film. Before Guy yeah, Ritchie. It's like it's Guy well, Lockstock had come out, but yeah, um it's like Guy Ritchie ish sort of it's not a Tarantino movie, but it's definitely in within that ripple that he made in the mid nineties. It's a, where it's like, what if, what if gangsters were funny? Yeah. And it's the gangsters are funny and the, we're going to weave everything together where it's a series of mishaps that lead into another. I think what this yes. doesn't do that. I don't want to see doesn't do as well because it's not a quality thing. Um, what it doesn't do that like the Guy Ritchie films do is it's less entwined. It's more just like in this, this happens and then this happens and then this happens. Um, yeah. It's, it's not like, Oh, remember that thing from like five scenes ago? Well, it's coming back. Like the guy in the closet has his own arc. That's kind of unrelated from the rest. I thought he was going to come into play more or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but they're all just these moving parts. that are kind of separate from each other. Yeah. Some of them. For yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. It really comes down to the fact that, it's I'm telling you, it's Alec Baldwin, man. Yeah, it he's, might be. He's he's the, he's the problem. <laughs> I think it's Alec Baldwin and a little bit of the tone. Uh, yeah, and again, I think he's responsible for a lot of the tone wonkiness. Not necessarily all of it, mm-hmm. um, but definitely a lot of it. Yeah, it's everybody's playing it very straight, very dry. Like uh, no one's being overtly funny. No one's like a silly character. As much as they are, like, in silly situations. Right. I wouldn't say... I mean, Michael J. White comes the closest. Mm-hmm. He's not He's not being silly, but it is a comedic performance. Yeah. But he's also um, still more, like, threatening. He's definitely... Right, yeah. Yeah. He's right. definitely funny in scenes. Um, like, he keeps messing up his metaphors. Oh, yeah. Like, you first at first you don't succeed, get the fuck out of the kitchen. Right. Like, he has a, kind of like a biff. Yeah, he's doing a real <laughs> biff. <laughs> yeah. So you gave him the whole dog and puppet show, he says to Rebecca de Mornay. Right. Um, but the, yeah, and, that goes yeah. by so fast that you like, I, I, for, for a while I thought he was doing it intentionally. Like that was like, he was doing like it's a very, dad it's, it's joke. Ex- it's extremely subtle. Yeah. I didn't yeah. pick up on it until the second or third one. Right. Um, his whole bit about why he bought a Volvo. I thought that scene was real funny. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's. There's right. no like, See, like there's no like real huge jokes. It's just like a series of funny conversations or like interactions. Yeah, I I call them more quirky. Like his thing about yeah. buying a Volvo Volvo was just that he likes safety. And mm-hmm. I was just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> like it yeah. was like, oh yeah, safety. That's that's cute. Mm-hmm. Like it's a lot of stuff he's, that was kind of cute. He's really into golf. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, that's like a bad guy in the 90s thing. They always have those gu- that putting that putting machine right it, he's got like his character arc is like the whole reason he rips off the mob in the first place is he's trying to get out from underneath them because he wants to be he wants to be that image of the of the successful guy who ha- you know like the his he, of the guy who's successful and has refined tastes so that's he's got all this art right in his office there's a scene where they come in and he's oh, just sitting there looking at swatches this, for his i really like the swatches because the swatch it's just because he keeps saying swatches yeah, uh, and that was very delightful. Well, and when they pe- when Andre Brower peeks in on him, like you see him, he uh, Michael J. White's holding up a swatch in his peripheral vision, and then he turns his head real fast. Um, which, like, you can understand sort of what he's doing. He wants to see like if the couch was that color, how would it look? Right. It, but like the way he like he, it's very intentional that he does it this way. It's the way he does it. It's just really fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, um. Yeah, I just, man. None of these made me laugh, though. None of them were funny in the moment for me. 
Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I, well, I don't like, again, they, I, I thought like, oh, that's funny. Mm-hmm. But I think the movie is very tonally flat. Uh, they don't like, and maybe this is cause I'm a dummy. There's no like editing cues for the, fu- the comedy. And then Alec Baldwin is so dry. A lot of people, I think he's not the only one who plays it dry. Like I think that cop, she plays it very dry. She has uh, more fun with it, I think. Yeah. And I, like, it just feels like, like you could have taken the same script and give it to like a different director and maybe I would have gotten a, more laughs, but maybe not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but because you're right, these performances are all, are all good. Mm-hmm. I think it's just that I didn't know what I was supposed to be watching. Yeah. And what it amounted to. Um, mm-hmm. It's only clicking now that it was supposed to be kind of like a Guy Ritchie film where nothing really matters in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I probably will watch it again. I'm considering buying the DVD. Ooh. I'm glad um, you liked it. I did, man. I really enjoyed this goddamn movie. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm sad I didn't know it existed before. Well, this uh, that was my first note, is this movie is one of those things where you're like, man... There's a lot of movies, you know? There are. Like, there you hear are, a movie like this, and you're like, I this had Alec Baldwin and Michael J. White, and, like, I never even fucking heard of it. And, well, you got to think, at the very, very least, like, the movies that have the biggest reach on, on a normal year, not in 2020, where everything is hell, mm-hmm. um, there are at least two new movies in the theater every single week. I know, it's wild. Um, and that's just the movies that have AAA distribution. Right. That's not counting the stuff that's just hitting art houses. That's not counting the stuff that's just direct to video. Yeah, man. There are thousands of movies a lot that of come movie. out every year. A lot of I, I always the thing one of the weird ones that reminds me is all the seventies Planets of the Apes sequels, where I think like, man, there was like a span where people had to like go to the theater and see that piece of crap. Like yeah. it's it's a nice reminder that movies have always been mediocre, or at least some movies, where it's like, man, imagine living in a time where they're like, you gotta go see the new Planet of the Apes sequel, right? Where it's the like, local theater has two screens or whatever. Yeah, and I, I say that knowing that we lived through that nightmare recently as well with Planet of the Apes, but there were like five of the old ones. Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. it's a nightmare. Couldn't handle that. Mm-mm having to like think about those movies to like yeah. sit and in it's a like, theater and like yeah like fucking beneath the planet of the apes is the only thing playing at the theater for two months yeah and it's like i guess i'll go fucking see that again movies used to just sit in the fucking theater for months you yeah guys. <laughs> and movies oh. like that man like i can't imagine like like a, a movie theater like that with beneath the planet of the apes like I, I have to assume like eighty percent of the audience are people who just assassinated a politician, mm-hmm. just yeah. sitting there hoping. Uh, I don't know. It's we're off track. Mm-hmm. A lot, a lot of uh, assassins on the run and teenagers fucking. Yeah, that's teenagers what all this, fucking. No, that's what I all guess if you're not, were. if you can't watch them at home, then yeah. But like, oh God, who would just casually go out to see that fucking? I don't know, man blows my mind it boggles the mind it I'm, I'm, does. I'm reminded of i i think i've told this story probably on a podcast before of like my dad telling me when he was just like had an afternoon free and he went out and he was like i'll see what's playing and he went to a theater and he was like oh okay never heard of this raiders of the lost ark all right let's go see it and it's like can mm-hmm. you fucking imagine can you imagine like just stumbling into a movie like raiders of the lost ark and coming out like holy shit uh because like if you're not watching trailers a lot which you wouldn't be back then like it'd just be like rolling the dice every time you walk in maybe you'll see beneath planet of the apes or maybe you'll have your life changed uh (laughs) it's like who the fuck knows yeah it's a it's a crapshoot yeah um we're so off track no i mean this movie reminds me of like in more in the 90s late 90s i used to with friends we'd go to the video store and we go to like the indie section and just grab things at random Mm -hmm, for sure yeah and that was really fun that's how i saw uh dead alive or Mm -hmm. brain dead if you're uh if if that's what you prefer to call it yeah uh this feels like one of those movies and again i didn't hate it um it just the it didn't land with me 
But the more we talk about it, the more I like it as a movie mm-hmm. and appreciate it and and love the cocaine wife of Michael J. White. <laughs> that whole scene is very funny. That was great. That that was the that was the scene that made me laugh. I still mm-hmm. yeah. I don't understand Janine Garofalo. I was glad to see her. I wish she was in it more. Yeah, you know, I think that was just a part that they knew that could be funny and they just cast somebody that they was funny in it that yeah. they knew. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. It's a fucking weird movie. Yeah, man. What a what a forgotten piece of cinema. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like we really just dug it up. You should buy a DVD just so we you know. get some an interest renewed. Yeah, and like we know that it can, yeah, it continues in the world. Because I'm scared they're going to run out of DVDs. And then. Yeah, it would, maybe if we buy enough DVDs, it'll get like a Shout Factory reissue that'll give it a better fucking cover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like more indicative of what the film actually is. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, I like, don't know. I don't know. It's. I would say, along with like a Guy Ritchie, it's like a, um, God, what were those like the eight heads in a duffel bag? Is that a comedy? I never saw that movie. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. And it is a bad one. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that in the theater. Um, I watched it again recently, and it is, uh, with a few rare exceptions, uh, Todd Luizzo is in it, and he's very funny in it, but uh, the movie mostly sucks. Mm. Um. Just not good. Really? Mm-hmm. It's Joe Pesci, right? It is Joe Pesci. I what mean, a... Joe, Pesci's, Joe Pesci's fun in it, because he's just playing a Joe Pesci gangster. Yeah. Uh, what a weird guy to do comedy. Like, I always forget, like, you know, my cousin Vinny is fucking, from what I remember, great. I haven't watched that in a while. Uh, yeah. But it's it's weird to think that he did comedy. So he could have done, he should have been Alec Baldwin. Do you think he could have done it? I don't know if he could have killed two cops in a car. That's the, yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> now I want to watch my cousin Vinny. Mm-hmm. And Malice. Yeah, I gotta watch Malice, man. Gotta watch Malice. Yeah, I have I have no more thoughts on this movie. I, I was, I'm glad you liked it. Um, not just for, because again, I didn't hate this movie. It, uh, like... It's like seeing a stand-up comic where, like, the audience is laughing or you they have charisma, but it's just not landing with you. Like, mm-hmm. and I, I still am not sure why. And for that reason, I'm probably going to have to watch this, watch this movie again. Sure. I also recommend that people watch it. Yeah, you can watch it for free in its entirety on YouTube. Yeah. Um, the sound's not great. I had to watch it pretty loud. Mm-hmm. It's not terrible. But... It's in full screen. Yeah, it's in a full screen format, but whatever. It was yeah. probably ripped from the VHS. Yeah, you'll never get it. We'll never get to appreciate the full widescreen cinematography of mm-hmm. Thick as Thieves. But mm-hmm. there's also another movie called Thick as Thieves. There are there are probably about twelve movies called Thick mm-hmm. as Thieves. That it kind of explains why this movie maybe vanished. Yeah, it could have used a better title. I don't know what that title would be. Um, John Wick. Sure, yeah, that's a good title. Yeah. I was delighted by the fact that the John Wick, you could say, kind of rips off a premise from this. Mm-hmm. This movie was ahead of its time. It was. Yeah. Uh, all right, any any final thoughts? No. No? I like this movie. You should watch it. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, have, I have no objections to that. Uh, like I said, I'll watch it again. Uh, th- thank you, Joshua Graves, for your yeah your log list. I'm curious to know how you uh, knew about this movie. Uh, I don't know. Maybe in some circles, maybe this is a cult classic. I'm sure it must be. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's 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 weird that we would find such a good quality version of the entire movie on youtube if it wasn't when i uh when i watched it on youtube the the following video that it suggested was a review of this and i was like who, <laughs> the, who the fuck reviews this and then i realized what i was about to do with you yeah <laughs> so i was like oh i guess all right we're just not doing it on youtube well technically we are because this will be on youtube yeah um what a fucking nightmare like these yeah. people listening to this us review like a 98 1998 alec baldwin comedy Mm-hmm. You poor, you poor bastards. Yeah, 
what the hell is your what what the actual hell is your life How like? How'd you get this fire? No, mm. I know what their lives are like. It's like mine. They're bored. It's it's identical to my life. <laughs> I may, I played God. I played Beat Saber for like an hour today. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's like you know what it's like. Have you ever mm. played Beat Saber? I've not played it. I know what it is. It's like if you were in the Blade Runner universe and you were chopping blocks to Mega Man soundtrack music. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of the best thing. Yeah, you're, it's it's your 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 techno ninja. You're swinging a sword to techno techno Jedi. Yeah, yeah, and that'll that'll do you. That'll do you mm-hmm. for a while. Um, did I for say th- at least an hour? <laughs> yeah. Did I say thank you to Joshua Graves? We did. Yeah, we thanked okay. him. We so thanked him profusely. We can tell people about our Patreon, mm-hmm. uh, which is patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We have exclusive mm. podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Fox Mulder is a Maniac. If, you're, if you've mm. been listening, Tom and Jeff just celebrated their two-year anniversary with a it's free dumb. episode. It's so dumb. Yeah, a free episode covering Joker, which, as you reminded me, Tom, has a scene where he puts thumbs in someone's mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's exciting. Yeah. It was it was easily the high point of the episode, although mm-hmm. that might actually not come until the next episode. I can't remember. Oh, okay. Sorry. Spoilers. I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. We split that fucker in half. It's a two-parter. Mm-hmm. We're going to milk it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's the strat. Yep. Um, we also have a store at tpublic.com slash store slash Gamefully Unemployed, where you can get t-shirts, stickers, mugs, uh, posters, whatever you want. Baby onesies. Really? We had some. We had some. Yeah, we got onesies. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. What should we um should we make a specific should we make a a baby onesie like something just to be a ba- baby onesie? Yeah, it should say look at this goddamn baby. Ooh, yeah. I was thinking we could just do the let's peg on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's grave in a baby onesie. Well, I mean, you could probably get I think you can just get any of our designs oh, on, a, on, okay. on a onesie. I think yeah. that's how it works. So we should make a but special could, look we, at this goddamn we could, baby. D- we, yeah, we could specifically design look at this goddamn baby. Yeah, that's easy enough. <laughs> yeah. Look uh, look out for that. That'll come. Look out for that. You, you can be the hero that puts that on your child. Mm. Mm. Good for you. Good for you and your yeah, kid. Yeah, good for you. Uh, is think that how it? proud they'll be of you when they see photographs when they're older. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah what? Well, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't want to keep this ball in the air anymore. <laughs> All right, let's. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's stop. <sighs>